Hello ladies and gentlemen, guys and ghouls, my name's Kevin and welcome to my channel, The Art of Horror. Today I'll be asking what the hell happened in episode 10 of Castle Rock, what is the schisma, and in the end, was the kid good or evil? Episode 10 of Castle Rock called Romans, which is a reference to a chapter from the book of Revelations from the Bible. It's also the passage that Warden Lacey and Matthew Dever have both recited. Episode 10 starts off with the kid, or Henry II as I like to call him, finishes up with his story to Molly about his tale from an alternate Castle Rock. The final thing he asks after telling her this story is, you do believe me, don't you? As alternate Henry is wanted for the fire at Juniper Hill, and the Henry from Our Castle Rock is wanted as a suspect for the murder of Odin. Odin built an, an echoic chamber in his van as part of the process to hear the schisma over the noise of the world. But as we see when Henry is released, Odin has been murdered. Henry Diva's son gets off of his bus and follows the sound of the schisma, which apparently he is sensitive to and it leads him right to the murder scene. Henry and Henry too are both picked up by the police and as a result are both put in the same holding cells. As the prisoners are being relocated, the prison bus hits and kills the new warden. As a result, this busload of prisoners have to be moved to the holding cells where Henry 1 and Henry 2 are residing. To make room for all the prisoners, they are both put in the same cell together. This is where Henry Diva actually witnesses the kid, Henry II, alternate Henry, doing some of his finest work. For within seconds of the prisoners being put into the holding cell, they start turning on each other, murdering each other, guards start getting murdered, and basically all chaos breaks loose. Within 30 seconds to a minute, everybody besides the two Henrys in the holding cells is dead. In fact, everybody in the entire building is dead. And Henry Diva actually witnesses it happening and finally comes to the conclusion that the kid is evil. He is a monster. I'm still unclear whether or not alternate Henry actually wants to get back home or whether or not he wants to just travel to another dimension. But he needs Henry Diva to find the schisma so he can travel between dimensions again. He leads Henry Diva out through the snow to the place where the schisma is at its loudest. The parallel between this walk with the two Henrys and the one that Henry Diva had with his father all those years ago is eerily similar, with alternate Henry even saying some of the same things. Now here's where things start getting a little bit twisted and strange. As a scuffle breaks out between the two Henrys, good Henry gains the weapon back from alternate Henry. And in that moment, in the darkness, we see not Henry II or alternate Henry, but a demonic, rotting figure for the briefest of moments. The story then cuts to a year later and we see Henry Diva working as a lawyer and then upon knocking off, works his way into the old end of the prison once again, where he is keeping the kid back in the cell. So the episode actually left a lot of questions, even though it felt quite satisfying at the end. It still left me questioning. I think the kid is pure evil. I think I've been saying that right from the beginning has been my gut feeling. Um, and the fact that he's based on the walking dude or Randall Flagg confirms this suspicion even more. As the walking dude is literally a dimensional traveler that causes chaos between the worlds he travels to. Always taking, never giving. Always destroying, never creating. He is what we here on Earth would call the devil or Satan, but he's basically an ancient being who is the devourer of worlds. I think all the information he gained from the residents of Castle Rock was purely through reading their minds, reading their mail, reading everything about them, going through all their stuff, learning as much as he possibly could about people. The more he knows about somebody, the easier it is to get inside their head. The story he gives Molly of a brighter, sunnier, nicer Castle Rock is almost down to the exact detail, the model she's been building for her real estate job. He tells her exactly what she wants to hear, for manipulative purposes, in exactly the same way he told Ruth exactly what she needed to hear to manipulate her. My hunch is 
that he wanted to use Henry as a divining rod to find the thin spot, at which point he would have probably murdered Henry and travelled to a further dimension to cause even more chaos. I think the alternate version of Castle Rock that Henry II gives is absolute codswallop. I think it's completely made up. And I feel the story is very Lovecraftian in nature as this presence that seeks out life through traveling dimensions only to feed on the fear, the anger and the chaos. The reality being he is not human at all, but what we would call a demon or a monster. So just very quickly moving on to what the schisma is. A common trope within Stephen King novels is the fact that we live in a multiverse. Every decision that you make creates a branchway in the timeline. Every branchway in the timeline creates a new timeline, wherein new decisions are made, new branches and new timelines are made. Therein creating this foaming mess of a multiverse of bubbles of the same variations of what could have happened literally exist in the same place all at the same time. When two of these multiverses become too close together, and I don't think that means literally too close together, I think it means when they start matching up, synchronizing, they create a vibration that is only audible to the brain, not to the ear. The closer the universes get, the louder this sound becomes. This is why if you follow the sound, if you're one of these people capable of hearing the sound and following it, it will lead you to a thin point, a thinny or a wormhole. It's why when alternate Henry uh, originally travels through a thin point, he sees many people from many dimensions and many timelines. This creature that can literally feed off of fear and multiply it. This is why keeping the kid in the hole in the cage and away from other people is so important and it disables his powers. As without anybody to manipulate, there can be no manipulation. So it's sad the first series has come to an end. It was absolutely amazing though. I think I'm going to keep talking about certain movies and television shows, especially ones that revolve around mysteries, leaving lots of questions to be answered as I found it a really good time theorizing with you guys. And in the end, it was interesting to not see who was wrong or right, but how close some of us came and how far some of the things I originally thought were from the actual truth. But once again, how close some of the things that I originally thought were. And overall, I think this is what makes for the best television viewing experience. It makes you want to watch and it makes you want to come back. I think the next show I will probably end up discussing is American Horror Story. An American Horror Story always has a bit of a mystery involved around it. So thank you all so much for watching. And also thank you all so much for helping to solve a lot of the mysteries surrounding this show Castle Rock. Which I'm sure people will still be discussing for quite some time. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit that like button. If you are new to my channel and would like to see more videos like this, please feel free to subscribe for more. So until next time, this has been Kevin for The Art of Horror. Goodbye for now.